Brian Callen was on a debate panel with Alex Jones in Destiny, and a question was asked, and Brian just went off about how he got canceled. So I'm going to play this and then give you my thoughts on it. This was down in Texas. Callen's going to be doing the comedy Mothership as he does some more stuff with Steven Crowder as the Fighter and the Kid podcast dies. So let's check out what Brian Callen had to say. I wanted to ask, today we just have this justice system that really assumes guilt and has to be proven innocent. What should we be doing to actually get back to being innocent until proven guilty? And is social media part of that problem? Yes, it's a huge problem. It's a huge problem because what happens is the minute you're you're accused of something, it doesn't matter. So none of that matters. What happens is every corporate sponsor you have and everybody you have business with stops doing business with you because they all go too sticky. So that's a huge problem. So so due process is dead for a lot of people because yeah. the minute somebody comes up and says you did this, and the problem with that is that that person gets a story and you get a statement and you're fucked. So if you are in a certain industry and somebody makes an accusation about you, see you later. And it doesn't matter how old that accusation is. It could be 30 years old, but go fuck yourself because every corporate sponsor goes, I can't, sorry, love you, but we can't do it. And that's a huge problem. So anybody who thinks we still live with in a, in a society where you have, and it, what it does, it creates an atmosphere of terror. People are terrified because I'll tell you something. Everybody's going to choose paying their mortgage and sending their kids to school and feeding their kids over a higher principle. And I don't blame people for doing that because it is that is the biggest problem with social media. And I see it all the fucking time in Hollywood, all the time. And there's no way you can fight it. And people just go, yeah. And everybody feels ashamed and hangs their head, even when they know, even when they fucking know that this person is innocent. And it could be an, it could be in anything, and we see it all the time. And so uh, I don't know what to do about that problem. I really don't. But until the money, until corporations go, hey, we believe in due process. And if you believe that, if you if you want to cancel somebody, you're next. You're next. And the only thing standing in your way is the the, the, the organization in power, which switches all the time, is going to favor you, or it's going to it's not it's going to it's going to kind of gloss it over and move on to the next person they don't agree with. And that's the biggest threat I think right now. I see it all the time. And I see too many people's lives get ruined as a result. The biggest one, re most recently, speaking to what you're saying, is Johnny Depp. Hey, listen, man, I got a thousand friends, including myself. You know, I've, I've, I've fucking, you know, all of them. Yeah. But yes. we don't we don't all exactly have the same kind of resources Johnny Depp does to fight right. back. Exactly. And that's the thing. Exactly. And and cancel culture is very real. And what it means is all of a sudden you can't work and you gotta sell your house and your kids have to say goodbye to your dog because you can't find a place. I've seen this with my own eyes in Hollywood. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's that's actually a reason though that one of the reasons that I err on the side of allowing for more open social media, because if you've at least got a platform somewhere, if you've got your followers, if you got people who have your back, if you have people that at least listen to your side, right. then you can get something going. Then you can get something going and push back or at least have people to fall back on if times do get tough and all those labels want to pull out. Yeah, if, you, if, you're a, if you're a podcast, if you're a comic, if you're you, at certain parts, you can, you, you can weather certain storms. Right. If you're just an actor, if you're just a director, if you're just a producer, if you're just an agent, if you just work at Netflix as an executive, we'll see you later and nobody's going to touch you. And all it takes is a story. It doesn't have to have any corroborating evidence. And you have a press, a lot of activists and press who are looking for clicks because they don't make any money and they got to figure out a way to make a story out of this. Yep. So the temptation, it's a, it's a systemic problem. It's a real, it's a real issue. And I like the, I like the whisper network. Personally, I think the Me Too movement in a lot of ways is a good movement because I like fair play. And I also saw a lot of women deal with a lot of bullshit. I've been in that business for 30 fucking years. And I saw women have to eat all the dicks, no pun intended. I really did. And it sucked for them and they had no way to fight back. And the minute they made one argument, the, the male whisper network canceled them. And that happened forever in Hollywood. And it wasn't until 2017 that, that Harvey Weinstein and the monsters got taken down. And all all those shitheads got put on notice. But with every revolution, it will eat its young. You better be careful. And because the pendulum, Americans have so much trouble being in the middle. We have to swing one way or the other. And I think that's the biggest threat. Now, I don't know how, I don't have a solution for
for it. I really don't. I, I think hitting on the last thing you said there, I think the problem with cancel culture is it's not social media driven. I think it's just driven by who we are as people. Yeah. I think that people aren't capable fundamentally of having so much information thrown in front of their faces. Like, I think we're built for, what is it, like 50 friends, I think is like yep. sociologically, like how yep. many you're able to keep at one point in time. If you, if you show me like a Twitter feed and you put a story up with some guy and I see a headline, like 99.9% .9 of us aren't even reading the fucking story. We see the headline, oh, that guy, I guess probably ra rapist, you know, and then click off on the next X, 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 and that's it. And that's the only thing we do. Um, I, unfortunately, I don't think there's a thing because when we talk about cancel culture, it's not really driven by social media companies. It's not even really driven by corporations. I think it's driven by people's just binary view of other people. And when you've got unlimited access into people's lives and you can see any mistake or any error or any reported issue with that person, it's very easy to flip a switch in your head and go, fuck that guy. I hate that guy. I'm not going to support these companies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and I don't know. That's something I, 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 do, I do wish the money, I do wish corporations would say, let us look at the evidence first. The, well, right? the real thing is, I think corporations need to fucking have a backbone because like, are people really going to boycott fucking Nestle or Pepsi or Coke because they sponsor some guy that had a thing? Like, I don't think it'll happen. Right. The corporations buckle so fast because they they're so worried that like something is going right. to blow over area yeah, and destroy right. their hand. Yeah. All right, let's bust through a bunch here. Now, I do agree with what Brian Cowan said. Kind of an odd thing coming from him because when Chris D'Elia was first accused, hell, you just Chris D'Elia was just a guy Ryan Callen met, met twice in his life or something like that. But um, I do agree with what Brian Callen said. However, what Brian Callen said kind of doesn't apply to Brian Callen. Meaning, the person who accused Brian Callen and who he ended up suing but then dropping the lawsuit, um, their story was corroborated. Meaning, this person told a story about Brian Callen from, what was it, 20 years ago. You remember what the story is. And um, she had said at the time, she went and told one of her male friends. And in that article... That reporter asked that male friend, and that male friend said, yeah, she did tell me he did that at that time. So that's, now, there's still no physical evidence or anything, but there was some corroboration by not just the person who accused Brian Callen. However, I will say, his overall statement, I do agree with. Uh, see, Brian Callen gets with Steven Crowder, and now he's in debates with Alex Jones and Destiny. Alex Jones was at this debate. I think he left like five minutes before Callan went on this tangent about getting canceled. But, I mean, so much more upside than being at the fighter and the kid. I'm telling you, he's not staying there. <laughs> I'm telling you, he said he's going to stay there. Let me assure you, three months from now, when he's like, Ugh, do I really got to go back to California to do a podcast with that idiot that gets no views anymore? It's dead. It's done. It's over. But, uh, yeah, I think uh, he's going to end up staying with Crowder and stuff like that. And uh, during this debate also, he like kind of sided with Destiny more. So I don't know if he's going to do that complete push to the right wing side. But yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments.